how great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. All the earth will see how great is our God. Why don't you lift your voice and sing it anyway? How great is our God? How great is our God? Sing with me. How great is our God? All the earth will see. How great is our God? If you know he's great, why don't you put your hands together? How great is our God, how great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, all the earth will sing, how great is our God. I want to talk to you this morning about how to get back. So many times in our lives, we leave the Lord. And we leave the Lord not only in just by not coming to the sanctuary, but some of us come to church week after the week, and we've left God. It's something about when you have a broken relationship, when you've had a good relationship with someone and you fail to communicate, you fail to talk to them, you fail to stop by their house. The relationship has a tendency to be broken. And so many people of the Lord have started off real good with God. Started off talking to God every day. Started off doing everything that the Lord had required and asked of us to do. And somewhere down the line, our relationship became broken. Whether it was because of people and their influence or whether it was because we began to grow weary while we were running well. Whatever the case may be, so many of us have allowed our relationships to be broken with the Lord. And what God desires to do, he desires to restore that relationship that we once had. Here we have a parable that Jesus is talking about two sons. And the Bible says that the younger son, he desired to have his portion. And his father granted unto him his portion. And he took his portion and he made a whole lot of bad choices. He ended up spending all of his money. He ended up living beneath his privileges. And any time we leave the Father, you're going to live beneath your privileges. It's somehow sin and this world has a way of allowing things to be so enticing. They make it seem good and make it sound good and make it feel good. But the Bible says the ways of the sin is death and the enemy comes but the kill, steal, and destroy. And any time the devil begins to draw you away from God and closer to himself, his only purpose is to destroy you. His only purpose is to take from you. But so many of us allow the enemy to come in unaware. And before we know it, everything that we had worked for, everything that we had strived for, he begins to take it from us. And one thing about when we leave God, the devil makes it feel like or make you feel like it's hard to get back. He makes you feel like God is not going to forgive you. He makes you feel like things are not going to get any better. But the Bible says, if my people which are called by my name will just humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I'll hear from heaven, I'll forgive their sins, and I'll heal the land. When you leave God, the only thing you need to do is just turn back and say, Lord, I'm sorry. When you leave God, the only thing you need to do is just get down on your knees and say, Lord, have mercy upon my soul. But so many of us allow the enemy to get us off focus. So many of us, we used to work in the church, we used to do this and we used to do that, and the enemy comes in and makes us feel like, what's the use? Make us feel like they don't appreciate you. They don't call your name. They got one person that sings all the songs. They got one person that prays all the prayers. But if you do what you do to the glory and the honor of God, you can sing all the songs you want to sing. You can pray all the prayers you want to pray. At the end of the day, I'm still going to be found doing what God has given me to do. Because the Bible lets us know that if you be faithful over a few things, I'll make you ruler over many things. And so many of us, the reason that we'll never be promoted is because we didn't learn how to be faithful. The minute somebody looked at you the wrong way, you stopped. The minute someone didn't call your name, you stopped doing what God called you to do. Well, the word of God lets us know that if you eat or drink, you do it to the glory and the honor of the Lord. 
So if you do what you do to God's glory and God's honor, can't nobody stop you from doing it. But if you do it so man can celebrate you, if you do it so somebody can pat you on the back, yeah, you'll sit on the back row. Yeah, you won't lift your hands and tell God thank you. But if you thank God in the midst of the adversity, if you thank God in the midst of who don't like you, if you thank God in the midst of folks talking about you and lying on you, if what you do, you do to the glory of God, it don't matter if you celebrate me or not. I pat myself on the back and say, well done, little John. So here... Here we have this young man, and he made up in his mind, I'm tired of living up under my father's roof. I'm tired of doing what my father is instructing me to do. So just give me my portion and allow me to go on and make my own decision. And anytime we get so big and bad that we can't seek God for direction, because the Bible says, listen, it said, lean not to thy own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him. Anytime you get so big and bad and bold until you don't need no instructions, you can't listen to what nobody said, you're on your way to an accident. You're on your way to destruction. You're on your way to messing yourself up real good. But listen, the Bible lets us know he, he, he wants us to come humble before him. Come as a little child. And look, little children, they, they, they used to listen. They used to take instruction. But now the enemy is raising up a new generation that they don't want to endure sound doctrine. That they don't want to hear no words of wisdom. But you got to make up in your mind, come hell or hot water. I'm going to stay in the presence of God. I need the wisdom of God. You're not going to make me leave God. So the enemy will make you feel like you can do this thing on your own. Like you don't need the church. You don't need nobody to help you. And you got to watch the world and watch the church people because we'll begin to take instruction from folks that ain't doing no good in their life anyway. We'll take instructions and listen to folks that their lives all messed up. If somebody marriage messed up, how they gonna advise you on how to have a happy marriage? If somebody broke and disgusted, how they going to advise you on how to get some money? The other day I went out to eat and all of us should eat healthy. I went out to eat and, and I thought about somebody said about eating healthy and, and I ordered what I thought they thought I would have needed to order. And I tell you, I did not enjoy it. You should eat healthy. But I did not enjoy it. But when I thought about it, I said, that person probably drank. They probably smoked it. So the smoke going to kill them because they're going to get cancer. The drink is going to mess up their liver. So the, either way it goes, they're going to die. So they might as well have a pig feet just like me. They might as well have a hog mog and some chitlin. Because how you going to advise me on how to eat? You drinking and smoking. You clubbing and staying. You got to watch who you take advice from. <laughs> I went on to meet some fish. Some fried fish. 